The U.S., the U.K. and Canada have decided to send troops to Kabul to evacuate embassy staff members. The U.S. is set to dramatically scale down its embassy in Kabul. 3,000 troops have been sent temporarily to aid the evacuation of staff members. And this comes as the Taliban continue to make rapid territorial gains in the region. The United States had hoped that diplomacy would halt the Taliban's advance. However, according to U.S. intelligence assessments, the terror outfit could isolate Kabul within 30 days and take it over completely in 90 days. This is not abandonment. This is not an evacuation. Uh, this is not the wholesale withdrawal. What this is, uh, is a reduction in the size of our civilian footprint. This is a drawdown of civilian uh, Americans uh, who um, will, uh, in many cases, be able to perform their important functions elsewhere, whether that's in the United States or, or elsewhere uh, in the region. So the message shouldn't be, the implications of this shouldn't be outsized. The first movement will consist of three infantry battalions that are currently in the Central Command Area of Responsibility. They will move to Hamid Karzai International Airport in Kabul within the next 24 to 48 hours. Two of those battalions are United States Marines, and one is a U.S. Army battalion. Another infantry combat team, up to 4,000 soldiers, would be positioned in Kuwait for backup and support. 1,000 personnel will help Afghans going through special immigration processes. U.S. President Joe Biden ordered the embassy drawdown during a meeting with top security advisors. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken tweeted that he and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin discussed the current security situation with Afghanistan's President Ashraf Ghani, and they also discussed the U.S. plan to reduce civilian footprint in Kabul. Blinken said that the U.S. is committed to supporting a diplomatic solution. Meanwhile, the U.K. government is sending 600 troops to Afghanistan to help British embassy staff leave the country. UK Defence Secretary Ben Wallace said that the deployment of additional military personnel has been authorised to support the diplomatic presence in Kabul. The Ministry of Defence has said that troops have been deployed to Afghanistan on a short-term basis, keeping the increasing violence and rapidly deteriorating security situation in mind. The military deployment will provide force protection and logistical support for the relocation of remaining British nationals. The number of staff members working at the British Embassy in Kabul had already been reduced and last Friday, Britain's Foreign Office advised all British nationals to leave Afghanistan as soon as possible. Canada, meanwhile, has also decided to deploy special forces to the country to evacuate its own staff from Kabul. There is no information as of now on how many troops will be sent. Just last month, the Canadian government had announced a special program to urgently resettle Afghans deemed to have been integral to the country's armed forces mission. The United, the, the United Nations has said that it is particularly concerned about the violence taking place in urban areas. The organization has warned that if the offensive reaches Kabul, it would have a catastrophic impact on civilians. The Associated Press's regional analyst Sagar Megani explains what is the road ahead for American troops in Afghanistan. Take a look. The U.S. has been slowly pulling its embassy forces out of Afghanistan since April. It just now wants to speed it up. So it's, it's again, going to great lengths to kind of dispel that notion that this is going to be helicopters landing on the roof and troops rappelling down and, and you know, pulling people up and and flying away quickly. This is all designed to be more orderly. The State Department clearly trying to explain it as this is just continuing the drawdown and we're speeding it up a little bit because of what the security situation is. This is not a, you need to set fire to your papers and, and burn your hard drives and you know, break your computers and, and quickly get out of there. But the question was asked at the Pentagon that it, it, it seems odd that you're on the one hand, slightly downplaying it. On the other hand, you're sending three infantry battalions, ground forces, paratroopers in to do this to pull far fewer people out. Does that almost seem like overkill? And again, both at the Pentagon and the State Department trying to project that sense of calm saying, we just have to protect our people. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.